Hello lovelies! This week we are making 1780s stays. Welcome back to my channel and the first video in a series on making my Halloween costume. I will be making a Rococo version of Sarah Sanderson from Hocus Pocus. Here's my original design for this dress. I sketched this in June of 2020 and bought the silk for it the following month, and so this costume is quite a bit overdue. First, I am making a brand new pair of 1780s stays using the red threaded pattern that you can buy on their Etsy or their website. And I will admit the reason that I'm making stays is because I did not follow the suggested sizing last time and um, I didn't have a two inch gap in the back and so now my stays from last year are too large. So this time we're gonna follow that and I also bought a size smaller so that I can actually have a gap so that it will actually fit me <laughs> better than last year's and I also had Patreon vote on which fashion fabric to use for these stays. So the stays don't necessarily match the, the costume per se because I used scrap silk versus silk that I bought for this dress specifically. Okie dokie. So like per usual, I will list all of the materials I use below and if I have links, I will link to those items. Finally, this is more of a collaboration type project. So this is the first video in a series, like I said, and I'm actually creating a playlist of my friend Paisley and Glue, who is making a Winifred Sanderson to go with this. Her videos will be included on this playlist. So if you're seeing this in a year from now and you're like, oh my gosh, I get to binge watch all of this, you can watch hers progress as well as mine. But if you're seeing this video go live as it goes live, this will be the only video in the series besides Paisley and Glue's videos. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy seeing both of us make these. I also hope that, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Let's make a pair of stays, okay? Yeah. All right, so we are in the mock-up phase. I have cut my cotton. This is gonna be my cotton layer, obviously my pattern pieces, and then my duck canvas. This is gonna be our st stability layer, I guess. Um, I'm gonna take these pieces over to my uh, light board and mark them, and then um, we'll sew this to that. We are not really gonna do binding, but we will cut the tabs and um, we are going to do like kind of like flimsy-ish grommets. We're just going to poke holes basically, but we're going to basically try to just get this with bones and sew them together and put it on my body and see what it looks like. I'm not going to take too much of this process because this is the mock-up. So uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, friends, so here is our mock-up. Uh, it's pretty, it fits pretty well. It is very comfy. I made two mistakes. One, I sewed the back seam only, I think a, a half an inch when it's supposed to be five eighths of an inch. And then I also put the mock-up, mock-up, oh my God, words. I put the boning in the opposite way. So like typically when you purchase boning, it comes in a little curve like this or on, a, on a, like in a circle like this and when you put your boning in the channel you want it to actually be the the curve to go towards your body because you're basically gonna then the warmth of your body and also just the 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 fittedness of your corset is going to or stays in this case is going to shape this and mold it so that it can go the way that it needs to go i put it in this way and the downside to that is two things. One, all of these, which are supposed to be kind of like working like with and or against my body to create the shape, 
are just naturally hanging out like this. And then if you look at this back one right back here, it's just hanging out. Like it's not even touching my body. Like it's not even getting close to my body. So it's okay for a mock-up. Like it's not a huge deal. I also think that this wouldn't be, this is a little loose, like if you can see. So I basically decided that I was going to take the back end by a quarter of an inch and then the side back to back seams were each going to take in an eighth of an inch and that should bring everything in by about a full inch and get exactly what I want. For cutting the pattern pieces, I decided to lay my piece down onto my coattail with weights and draw around the edge of the piece. From there, I flipped the piece over so the printed side of the pattern was faced down onto the right side of the fabric and repeated the process. In order to get the most accurate pieces, I did not cut on a fold and I did not use a fabric piece to trace as my pattern. I made sure to keep drawing all based off of the paper pattern pieces. Okay. So how excited are you to see the fabric for these stays? Oh my gosh, look how pretty. Look at this silk do peony. And look at this lining for the do peony. I had Patreon vote and you know, I'm pretty much on board with this color. I like it. I used my paper pattern piece to cut the fabric out on a silk dupioni for the fashion fabric and a striped cotton for the lining. Using my light box, I placed the silk pattern piece pinned to the paper pattern piece with the paper side closest to the light, and then I traced over all of the markings for the boning. I used a ruler to help me keep my lines straight since the slubs and the dupioni made it a bit difficult to do this on my own. I also took this opportunity to trace the little tabs at the bottom of the fabric for the pieces that had tabs on it. Then I pinned the silk to the corresponding cotille piece and brought it over to my machine to sew. For the boning channel that runs across the stays perpendicular to the other boning channels, I dropped my needle down at the channel intersections and then moved my fabric to line up with the next channel. Stitching the boning channels is very time consuming. I think from drawing on the channels to stitching them, each panel took me about 30 minutes, so I was able to listen to a lot of YouTube when I did this. Also, in case you didn't know, Noelle from Costuming Drama has a new video, so we're gonna listen to this while we uh, sew stuff up. And uh, yay, I'm so excited! Okay, so I am quite possibly the worst because I didn't, well first, I, d I didn't feel it was necessary to get footage of me adding boning to, or boning, um, adding the channels to literally all of these because while well, like it's the same four or five steps and I showed you how I went around the curve or the, the, the hard areas. So anyway, now I realized that, well, first I didn't read the instructions because I've made several pairs of stays before and I was pretty comfortable slash confident in my ability to make a pair of stays. And so I was like, yo, I'm just gonna do these the way I do them. And then I started reading the instructions to figure out like, what do I do after the channels just to kind of make sure I'm doing this quote unquote right. I did things really weird and different. So I do apologize to everyone that was watching this, hoping to follow along with the instructions that Red Threaded has given. So that is not something that you're gonna get in this tutorial. And maybe I'll do a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, but basically it's just not. So this is where I'm at. Um, I have all my pieces pinned and um, ready to go. The front ones are gonna get sewn on 3 8 of an inch. And then um, this second one is gonna get sewn at 5 8 of an inch. And then this back one is actually gonna get sewn as close to this stitch line as possible. So this stitch line is basically denoting this back, um, pay, uh, this, this, this boning channel here. And so we're going to get as close to it as possible. 
so that it will actually have that two inch gap in the front. So then what I did for my lining, because again, I did things way different than what the instructions say, is I just marked on here so that like on the lining ones, I'm doing the exact same on that because I am a forgetful human and I just wanted to be very perfect and precise. With that all being said, I'm gonna go do that. And then we're gonna come back and decide slash figure out like how we want to handle um, these curvatures because again, so that's what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go sew these all up and then um, we will press this flat and then make life decisions and figure out how we wanna do this because as much as I need to press these flat, I also need to get, make sure I don't lose these stitch marks, which are heat set. So we might finger press or we might press and be very strategic about where our iron goes. We'll figure that out. All right, cool, let's do this. I thought I had more time, but my battery died while I was talking. So let's try this again. Ugh, okie dokie. So I did decide to stitch along these lines here that I had drawn um, in my pen. And basically I just skipped over where the, the boning is gonna go because I have to do that still. And I'm so glad I did because now I was able to just press all of this flat, get all my seams laying really flat, and I still have to do it for the cotton layer and the bias. So, yay! Okay, so before I add the boning channels, I'm just going to sew the cotton lining to the um, outer fashion-y stuff with the right sides together just at this front seam. So I'm basically gonna do what I did in the back where I'm gonna get as close to this guy as possible. So I'm gonna do that, flip it and press it, and then I'm gonna unplug my iron for a little bit because I don't really need it again until we start working um, on adding the binding. Also, I think I forgot to mention this, I just sewed the um, fashion fabric, cotill and cotton all together. I need to press this actually, and um, for both of the little tabs, and then we will add the binding again when we're done. So for the um, boning on this, I basically already did all the, like cut them all, all the lengths and use them for my mock-up. And now I am basically gonna take them out of each one and transfer them to the one they belong in, one by one, because I, here yeah, I'll just show you, I decided not to, just for the time, like the time, um, I didn't file the edges yet. So basically I have to take all of these out, trim them, file them, and put them in the actual corset course it stays so that's what I'm gonna do this will probably take me a solid hour or so and then I can actually sew up the lining to the top fabric and get our binding on once my binding is on 
it's just hand sewing the inside of it and adding grommets because I don't I like to hand sew my binding I know you can stitch in the ditch and I know that's how red threaded does it but I really enjoy the hand sewing aspect of it so that's how I'll be doing it but I'll show you how I um, clean up my boning real quick and then uh, yeah we'll just we'll scurry right along so these are my like bad scissors or like my, um, I use them for stabilizer and boning and whatever else is not fabric. So um, they, they are spring loaded, but the spring is really bad. So like when I did used to use these on fabric, my, it was just awful. So I also use a glass nail file. This is just a plain old nail file. If you have power tools like a sanding belt, this will go by way faster, but I do not. Um, I, and I, I have no desire to buy one. Although like I keep saying I should get a grommet press and I actually am adding, um, I am probably going to purchase one early next year, or I actually thought about asking for, for that for Christmas. Cause it's a great Christmas gift. Um, but I, like if I'm going to get a grommet press, I might as well, I have a Dremel, but I don't know. I just feel like this is fast enough. Like it, it I'm not super worried about how long doing boning channels takes like it's kind of methodic to me so maybe I don't need a a, 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 a sander thingy sander belt and that's kind of how I get a nice little edge there and now this is good enough to just put in and I took it out of this the actual center front so literally I'm just gonna lay this thing out like this and just go all the way down, just like I would. And I'm the one thing I'm gonna do differently, cause I, I talk about this in my mock-up, is I accidentally put all of these, see how this is curved? So I accidentally put them all in this way so that it was curving away from my body. We're gonna do the opposite and put it in this way so it's curving towards my body and this is actually gonna help me get the shape I want. Now I'm going to sew my lining to my coatil. To do this, I'm going to switch the foot on my machine to a zipper foot so I can stay clear of any and all pieces of synthetic whalebone. This step will also encase all of the boning in the layers so I don't have to worry about pieces of boning like coming out when I'm attaching the binding to the corset. To the stays. I keep saying corset. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I completely forgot that I can kind of iron my bones into submission. So basically the heat will help form them. Like I don't need them to be super flat, but if they are a little bit flatter than they were, that'll help me add the binding, which is the next step. So I went ahead and just stitched all of the lining and everything together at the top and bottom just to help, you know, just a little bit of help so that I can focus on getting that attached than like getting all three layers attached which like ideally should be easier if two of them are already combined right so that is what i did and i even i like didn't even try to sew through the curves or anything i went straight um across the bottom like the tab area because again i'm gonna cut those and trim them off this was just kind of like a preliminary step to help me with the next one so now I need to pin my binding onto the top. We're gonna do the top first. I like to ease into these things because <laughs> the tabs are really difficult. Like I've, I always have issues with them no matter like what they just, I will have to seam rip and redo things that always happens for me. Even when I use a zipper foot, even when I, I mean, I sew pretty slow on my machine to begin with. So yeah, but I just want to get these a little bit flatter and then I will get to pinning that on and sewing it up. And then I get to hand sew it tonight while I watch some TV. I have like all of my week's worth of TV to catch up on, so it's gonna be fun. To start, I decided to make my binding one and a quarter inch instead of one inch because I don't trust myself to be able to make it work with one inch. I eased into this step by starting the top 
top of the stays and then also doing the tabs. And I pinned the right side of the binding to the right side of the fashion fabric. It was at this step that I realized I didn't need to press one side in, but hey, it's fine. I'll work with what I got. Once everything was pinned, I brought it over to my sewing machine, and again, with my zipper foot and at about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I stitched this down. Red Threaded has an absolutely amazing video on their YouTube channel on how to actually do the tab binding, and they don't use any pins or clips or anything, and I'm going to link it below so that you can visually see how they do it because I did not get any footage of this because of how stressful it is to do this part. Once the binding was sewn, I took my mini iron to it. This was actually really great for getting into the curves of the tabs. I started by pressing the binding away from the stays. Once that was really crisp, I would flip the stays over and fold the binding down and towards the stays. Then I would actually fold the raw edge of the binding inside itself to hide that. And then I would add some wonder clips. And finally, I was able to take it over and start the hand sewing process. The hand sewing process took me quite a while and I um, actually ended up doing grommets after the hand sewing process. I didn't get any footage of the grommets. I was kind of a little like stressed out about how long the hand sewing took. So I think it's time to see how these turned out. What do you think? All right, y'all. So I really love how these stays turned out. I did completely forget how long it takes to hand sew binding. And so I may have watched the entire second season of Owl House as well as almost all of the first season of Ted Lasso while hand sewing these. So I'm a little bit behind on this project, but that's okay. I had great cuddles with Toby and Eva while watching shows and doing the hand binding. And I know you're all here because you're waiting for the reveal, right? Don't worry. It's coming, I promise. I just wanted to thank you all first for watching this video, for following along on my channel, and uh, for your love and support. Please join us next week while I work on the embroidery for the bodice to kind of recreate this stylized fabric that Sarah Sanderson has in the films. And don't forget to head on over to patreon.com slash Casey Renee Cosplay. That's my members only website where you can help support the channel and you get exclusive content like early access to videos, exclusive monthly live streams, digital patterns, embroidery files, and access to our patron only Discord channel. We've also got something kind of special happening right now since I have announced my large, my next large project, which is going to be Glinda's bubble gown from the musical Wicked. I will be embroidering by hand every single patron and Kofi supporters names into this gown if you support me over there or over on Kofi. The material cost for this gown is quite large. So I would love for your support to help purchase the materials and we will be starting that project in December. There will be a whole lot of content on that. So if you like this kind of content, consider supporting me over on Patreon or Ko-fi. And if you just like these videos in general, giving them a thumbs up, commenting below, sharing with your friends, that really helps tell YouTube that you like my content. And then it'll tell the rest of people on YouTube that are kind of like you to go watch my videos. How cool is that? That's awesome. So thank you so much for watching these videos and interacting. And um, without further ado, here's a pair of stays that I made.